Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. What's going on everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys what you need to be doing in every offseason in Dynasty mode. Now before we get into the video, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. As always, every like goes a long way in helping the channel out and grow. And of course, if you are into the channel, make sure to subscribe. We are on the road to 30,000 subscribers. I greatly appreciate it if you guys could sub if you're new. And of course, if you see down below in the comments and in the description, I will have my Twitter and underdog link. Make sure to check that out. If you follow me on Twitter, Twitter, you can at me with your dynasties and I will rate them. I will review them. And I also will give you advice if you do DM me directly on there. A lot of people have been asking me when they get to the off season, what's the best approach? Now, when we sim past the national championship, right past the draft, we are at the transfer portal. When you get to the transfer portal, the best you could do, and if you look ahead, there's national signing day, there's the off season, there's next season. What you want to do is when you get to the transfer portal before you go and get any players, what you're going to want to do is go to transfer portal. And then when you get here, you're gonna to wanna to go to top classes and see where you stood on the year. So in this instance, I simmed it to make it a little more realistic, right? I just let them, I let the computer handle it so it wouldn't be too high or too low. We got 12 total recruits. From here, you're gonna to wanna to assess where you stand as a roster before you go ahead and add players. So the transfer portal can be used in a few different ways, right? The first way the transfer portal can be used is because there's a top tier player there. Let's just say you go in here, let's say you see a top tier five star. In that sense, fine. That's a player that you want no matter what, but in a lot of cases, I like to use the transfer portal as almost like free agency, almost as roster filling for players I didn't get. So with that being said, I only have a 21th ranked recruiting class. It was okay. I only had 12 recruits. I'm not bringing in too much talent. So I definitely are going to have some places to fill. And with that being said, you're going to want to go over and look at what you did sign. Look at the positions that you did actually end up bringing in and take a look. What I would do is go through like this. Okay. So we got quarterbacks, only three stars. We probably could use a four star. Go through and see what you have. So what you want to do from that point is now go over to team and it's roster. Now this is where I keep saying like pen and paper, notepad, get out your iPhone, get out your Android, open up a notepad on your computer, whatever you got to do, open up a notepad, write down your recruits that you got position wise and their stars. Okay. So we brought in only one four-star safety, only one four-star strong safety, free safety, strong safety, we brought in two corners. Only one was a four-star though. We brought in some decent quarterbacks, but if you look here, I would go through your roster now and compare that to what you have. So we have uh, Nuss Meyer who's staying one more year. We have plenty of quarterbacks. I'm fine. I want a five-star quarterback to replace him. I don't, I'm not going to go to transfer portal guy here. No feeling to be needed. We got some running backs. We have some still on the roster. Not concerned about that. Plenty of wide receivers. Not concerned about that. Where we do have concerns is on the back end. Our cornerbacks are pretty weak. Overall, there's a senior there. We have some sophomores, no high development type guys. And we only brought in one four-star. I'm probably looking to add another four-star to that list in this situation. And a safety is another spot that we're typically weak at. Strong safety right here. We only have this guy, Jackson, who's a sophomore. He doesn't have the largest ceiling and we're only bringing in one guy there. I may consider adding another guy there as well. Another one that I might do is kicker. We only have a senior kicker. After that, we have pretty bad kickers. It may be worthwhile to look, see if you can find a sophomore type kicker or someone that's a decent, decently good player that you could bring in because in case you don't recruit a kicker next year. So that's the first thing I like to do with the off season is just go through and do roster breakdown. I like to do this in the beginning of the recruiting season to see what I need, but understanding that when recruiting, you don't have the final say. A player could just go elsewhere. Someone could out recruit you. You may try to bring in five cornerbacks and then get to a situation where you only end up winning one of them. And now you only have one cornerback. He wasn't that good. And now your team's low on it. Because if you don't fill these spots, you will have walk-ons who are just terrible players that are not going to help. They're going to be a liability on your team. So make sure you're going through and just seeing what you need. And you can kind of just go like this. Just go through center. See right here. We only have two centers. I'm going to go check that I bring in one. And if I didn't bring in one, I should definitely bring in at least one more. Cause if one of these guys gets hurt, we're down to our last center left guard. We have one guy. I'm going to go check our recruit class, see if we have it right here. And if we did bring in a left guard, then we're good. If we didn't, we, we know it's a guy we need to target, right? So let's go right here, go to left guard, offensive guard. We only brought in two right guards while you can switch the position. I'm still going to want to bring in another left guard here. So I'd come over here. I filter by guard. I'd see what's available. And you look here, there's some deal breakers. So you got to keep that in mind as well. But hopefully you can find a guy that does suit your needs. Unfortunately, in all these situations, playing style is pretty bad because I have one. But it's again, luck of the draw. Every transfer portal is different. That's the next thing. If you come in here and see there's only a right guard, maybe you take this right guard and then you switch him over to left guard because you already took two right guards already in the initial recruiting process. So keep that in mind. And then of course, after all that's said and done, once you've handled all your roster management, you wrote down where you're lacking positions, positions that you're totally going to need to fill and things you got to work on. Once you're there, come over here and see what the top guys are. See if there's anyone that's like super elite. Sometimes you'll get like a five star that falls in here that leaves an elite program and you want to get those guys regardless. Those are guys you totally want to grab and make sure that you do actually scoop those guys up. Those guys don't matter, but 
in terms of roster management like those guys can fit anywhere right so you want to take a look at that as well and once you have that established understand that the transfer portal is not for 10 guys i'm, I'm looking at maybe five guys max because you can only offer four visits per week and you really want to utilize those visits so i'm looking at like four to six guys maybe five max that i'm really gonna keep my eye on the first three or four are probably just gonna end up being guys to fill and then there's going to be like that one stud that I really want. And then keep in mind, though, as you advance these weeks, you get to week two, three, you're going to see a few three or four stars that go through the cracks that no one wants continue to go through now. And if you find a few other positions that you need to fill, go ahead and utilize that. So that pretty much wraps up that portion of the offseason, the transfer portal. It's very similar to recruiting. I will be putting out a transfer guide that should be live by the time you see this video. You can go through how to recruit there. I will be putting out a transfer portal glitch. Make sure to check that out as well. And that'll help you out with that portion. Once you're done with the transfer portal, the next thing is National Signing Day. Now, this day is another one of those days in the off season that you're going to want to monitor and just take a look at what you see when you get there. National signing days when all the commits officially commit. Now, there are situations where players do decommit. So you are going to want to check that out and just see what happens with that. It's, it's always interesting, especially for your own program. Sometimes you get here and notice you have another recruit that you don't remember. So what, what could happen is there could be a five star or four star player that you just narrowly lost out to. Let's say to Michigan, right? The three star guy, you just narrowly lost out to them. But Michigan throughout the season lost their deal breakers. You may come to National Signing Day and realize they signed with you and they dropped out. So definitely check in on that. It's always interesting so you don't get to next season and forget you even have that guy and so on and so forth. So that's the best way to approach that. Otherwise, National Signing Day is kind of just a day. It's nothing really too crazy. Now, the only good, big thing about this day is the position changes. Honestly, the National Signing Day itself is not the biggest of deals. This is another huge week. Position changes is such an important thing that you want to be doing in the off season. So you want to go through this list. I, I like to take this one position by position as well. See what you need. The quarterbacks, I'm not really going to touch. It's more going to be the offensive linemen, the positions you could really work around with, like the left tackles, right? I have two. That's fine. Guards, I have one. Centers, I have two. Right guards, I have two. Right tackles. So in this situation, I'm probably going to try to move one of these right tackles over back to left tackle if possible. As you see here, it does knock them down slightly but I'm probably moving him to left tackle. The reason for that being is that if you look at your roster, it was a little imbalanced. I had four right tackles. I only had two left tackles. So if a left tackle gets hurt, we're down to just our last backup. I don't want to be in a situation mid game where I'm getting a few injuries and you got to keep moving them around. I like to balance my roster out like this, go through there, go to left end versus right end. We have three. That's cool. Good to go. You can also go in and just see if they have a better, better chance of playing elsewhere. Like you see here, Relaford, Gabriel Relaford actually is an 86 run stopper at DT. So when you're at DT, you may want to go take a look at what you have. You notice here, that would be my best DT. And at left end, we may have a freshman that could come in, right? In this situation, we don't, but that's another thing you want to monitor. There may be a good freshman that you could start at that left end spot. And this guy's only 77 speed. You can move him over. So make sure you're going through and just balancing out your roster. This guy, you know, 268, 6'2", a little bit on the slower side. Maybe you could fit him in there. I'd like him to be a little bit heavier, but maybe you fit him in there. Check out his strength, see if he applies, but make sure that you are balancing players around. And if you come to backer, same situation. I like to maneuver these guys around if possible. We have plenty of backers, so I'm not too concerned. But it is a great way to kind of see where players could potentially play better. Maybe a slow cornerback could be moved over to safety. You see here, we have a guy like, these are all fast guys, not a problem. But you may see a guy that plays better at safety and vice versa. And just make sure you're maneuvering around. And here, I'd probably put one of these free safeties on the strong safety. Just to make sure we're super balanced in this aspect. And of course, make sure you are changing your athletes. The athletes are the players you sign that can play both sides of the ball. They're guys that can play numerous positions. Make sure you're putting them in the right position to succeed. I find some, I find typically that their top position outside of like linemen is pretty much where you want to put them like a quarterback. That's elite. I'm probably not going to move them to running back because I find like I want them to throw the ball. That's an elite athlete. But, you know, so on and so forth. Once you advance to the next week, we get to the training results week. Not that there's a lot to do here, but I do love to see what happens during training week. See how your players did improve. This is when the year switches over. So as you see, Caleb Durham went up two overalls there. This is an important week to monitor. Again, there's no actions to do, but this is a great week to see what your recruiting strategy is. You can start planning it like right now. Okay, quarterback, Colin Hurley is our top guy going into this year. He's a junior, only an 83 overall. My quarterbacks are trash. Recruiting a quarterback is going to be my biggest priority. Get the notepad out. I'm writing out right away. I need a quarterback. There's no way I can leave next recruiting class without a quarterback. Halfbacks, junior, Caleb Durham. He may be going to the NFL. You know, that, that's something to consider. He's a junior. It may be time to start considering bringing in a freshman. We have a few guys here that could play, but I'm definitely going to want to start building up that running back class and so on and so forth, seeing what we have. Watkins is only 74, he's 99 speed, but our wide receiver class is weak as well as what happens when you auto recruit. But yeah, so you wanna go through this and just see, and it's also kind of exciting to see how players grow, see what 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 went up, like this guy right here, Echoes, big left guard that I've been waiting on to, to kind of blow up, and there you go, 90 overall. Our center 87, it's just a great fun week. It's kind of like in Madden when you get to the dev trait week, when you see who upgraded during the Super Bowl. 
you know, so on and so forth. So definitely go through, see what you got, see who improved a lot. There's also a great way for you guys to test out like methods of what works for improving players, any consistency there, because you can kind of like sim through this and just see what works. And there's another important thing you do want to be monitoring during the off season. And then this week we have encouraged transfers. Now here's where I'm going to go through my methods for encouraging transfers that I highly recommend. Now, I really wish you could look at your player card from here. It is so frustrating that you can't. But remember, there's a few things to consider. You cannot transfer true freshmen. You can only transfer redshirt freshmen and then above. So keep that in mind. Another thing, when you over recruit, you will have to get rid of guys who are like 13. So make sure you aren't over recruiting when you don't need them. If you're a bad roster, feel free to over recruit. There's plenty of guys to get rid of. If you're a really good roster, understand that you're going to have to get rid of some guys that you may actually be using. So since you aren't able to look at it from encouraged transfers, this is why this is so important to follow this tip. Before you get to this week, when you still can, go to your roster page and go to your player card and look at every player's development traits and their stat caps. You don't know how that works. I have videos on my channel going over dev traits, progression, stat caps. Watch all those so you know what I'm talking about. You're going to want to go through your roster and take a look at all the guys that you may think are on the bubble of being encouraged to transfer. For instance, again, I can't show it to you here, but for instance, let's say you see Jelani Watkins. Let's say he was still, he was a sophomore and he's at 75 overall, but he has really high stack caps and he has star dev trade that's the guy that i want to keep in my roster because each season he has the potential to grow a lot so this is the point is you want to get rid of guys who have a low ceiling and keep guys that have a high ceiling doing this over the course of a few years will slowly weed out all your bad players and increase your ceiling tremendously for instance you have a sophomore player who has elite dev with really high stack caps pretty much can get has unlimited potential he's only 74 overall you want to keep that guy on the roster who you want to get rid of is that 77 overall safety who's your number two safety but he has normal dev and his stat caps are really bad they're really low he's gonna be maxed out soon because those are guys that you're never gonna get big offseason jumps on so by doing this and by scouting them out like that and i recommend writing all these guys down because you can't view it in this week right write all that down go through and once you actually have that when you get to this week what i would do is just come in here and start encouraging them in this situation right here right i'm looking through corners let's say this guy right here this sophomore has really bad stat caps and only has normal dev I'm probably going to encourage him to transfer and get him out of here. And instead, I'll keep this guy, potentially Terrell, who's 95 speed, freshman with a red shirt, and he has star dev with big, with, with high stack caps, which essentially means this guy has a big ceiling. He's only 81 now, but maybe next year when we advance, he may jump up to a 90. He may be able to have a big season. These are guys that you want to keep because it increases the ceiling of your program. So be getting rid of those normal dev guys. Be getting rid of all those guys that you see no ceiling on. You may see a guy in here like a junior like this junior middle linebacker 79 he's pretty much done he's not exactly an elite starter i'm probably getting rid of him now do be mindful of this when doing this even if they have a low ceiling they may be your starter so keep that in mind as we go through like you may see right here this red, red ends you may say oh warmack he's a junior he's 87 overall that's my starter cool i'm getting rid of this guy right here fine but then you might come over to d tackle and you may say oh this guy's a senior 86 i'm gonna get rid of him that that's your starter his ceiling may not be high but he's your starter so keep all these variables in mind when doing this Increase ceiling, but do not just get rid of your starter. If even if he has a low ceiling, that's still your guy. So you definitely need him for at least this season. So try to play around with guys who aren't going to be your starter and don't have a great ceiling for the future. And then of course you can do custom conferences. That's very separate and dependent on your league. Feel free to touch those as you feel fit. And that's it. We're back in the next season. So that pretty much wraps up what you need to be doing in the off season. My best off season tips. If you have any questions, off season related, comment them down below. Give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure to sub for new guys. Road to 30k. Make sure to keep subbing. Make sure to keep joining the family, and we're gonna keep growing. Thank you guys so much. Check out my Twitter and my underdog. I'm out. Peace.